number of players I've had had Tommy John surgery and then they didn't return to the same velocity or form. Sterling Hitchcock, who was a tremendous major league pitcher, we acquired back from San Diego. He had come off of a Tommy John surgery and his velo never came back to the previous level. Now he continued to pitch, so he goes in that successful category, but he wasn't the same pitcher. Final inning of regulation due up here at Bill Coleman Field. Riley Gillum of Clemson ready to take the mound after Dallas Wolfhook does his job. One inning of shutout ball with a strikeout. Sending down Cuba 1-2-3, as did his predecessor, Bryce Tucker. A lot of zeros put up on this board after the third inning. Nobody crossing the plate on either side of this tight 2-2 ball game. See a happy post-outing bullpen there in the dugout. 11 hits spread across these two teams, just four total runs. You mentioned Dallas Wolfolk, who exits after one inning of work. Since that one-third of an inning in his first appearance for Team USA this summer against Chinese Taipei, where things went kind of off the rails, he's been exactly, exactly what manager John Savage expected to get out of the closer from Ole Miss. Six innings pitched. He's struck out a ton of batters. He's only given up two hits, and it's just been lights out. Lights out could also describe the current pitcher for the U.S. Now it's Riley Gillum. In this series, two innings, two unearned runs. That was part of that international tiebreaker where he did essentially everything he could. There were no hits allowed that inning. It was a, a sacrifice bunt and a sacrifice fly that really scored those runs along with a wild pitch. On the summer, equally impressive. Five and two thirds, six strikeouts, no earned runs in and, the entirety of his summer. And maybe the fastest pace on the mound of any pitcher I've ever seen, much less on this USA team. He's going to work very quickly, as you'll see here, from pitch to pitch, not wasting much time at all. Yeah, the pre at bat routine essentially taken out of play. One ball, one strike here to Alarcon, the catcher, who is two for three today, struck out his last time up. That was against Nick Sprangle, now facing a right-handed pitcher. Yeah, and your best bet to have any kind of extracurricular stuff outside of the batter's box. Breaking ball gets out of his hand. Is, is in an example like that last bit, not that last pitch, but the one before it where the ball got past the catcher and into the backstop. That's the only way you're going to get any extra time to tighten the gloves or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Two and one, batter in the box, Gillum ready to pitch. Fouled away, two and two. You'll see the USA infield hugging the lines down at third and first base. Without a doubt, a no doubles situation. Top of the ninth, crunch time here at Bill Coleman Field. Alarcon, one of the best hitters for Cuba. Gillum, one of the best pitchers for the U.S. Two balls, two strikes, none away. Swung on, chopped towards third. Frank short hops it, but he can't handle it. That'll be a base hit to lead off this inning for Alarcon. Tried to scoop up the short bounce away from his body, and the throw in hits the umpire. That was bad luck for the U.S. there as Alarcon advances to second base on the throw. And now a runner in scoring position with Nunaway heads up base running there by Alarcon. It was a I mean, leisurely toss back into the infield by Swaggerty. And it bounced away from the cutoff man and eventually into the field umpire there. But... Alarcon doing a great job keeping his head in the game because that's a huge difference. I mean, if your leadoff man is on first, that's one thing. You put your leadoff man in scoring position. Now the possibilities are endless for Cuba. They could put a bunt down to move him over to third, which then creates a situation where Salmon, who's in the on could just push one up in the air for a sack fly that would give you the lead. 
a lot of ways this one could go now for Cuba. If I'm the U.S., I'm imagining a bunt scenario here. We've seen the bunt flashed in earlier innings with just a runner on first, now a runner on second. You would think that that was the play here. And with a smart but struggling batter at the plate, Gonzalez had three hits yesterday, sure, but so far today, 0 for 3, including a strikeout his last time up. Gillum doing the smart thing, good initial pickoff move to try to see if a bunt is shown, but nothing doing there. Runner breaking halfway there, but nothing doing. 1-0 oh now the count. And this, besides the obvious reasons, Joe, favors Cuba in that with a runner on second so early in this outing, you absolutely ensure that you're slowing down the pace of Riley Gilliam on the mound, not letting him get into his usual quick rhythm. Right, it's something he clearly likes to do, but in the stretch he works a little bit more methodically because there's more checks and balances to make. That one essentially a bunt grounded towards second. Magical Fields, runner advances to third. So a productive out for Narelle Gonzalez. And that's the ideal scenario. Yeah, uh, besides a hit, of course, but in that situation, you're not you're not laying down. But Gonzalez very aware. He wanted to push it to the right side of the infield, and it, in that case, if you squeeze it through for a hit, great. If not, you serve the same purpose as a sacrifice bunt, advancing the runner to third. So a mound conference coming here for the U.S. Pressure situation, runner 90 feet away. That is the leading run here in the top of the ninth. We've been knotted up ever since the third. And it's been an impressive outing for every U.S. pitcher. Gilliam just dealing with a little bit of bad luck here. A tough play for his third baseman, Tyler Frank, gets into the outfield. Alarcone advances to second base on the, the throw from Swaggerty. So... Crucial situation here, not perhaps by his own hands. You see Olsen in the U.S. just in case here. More as a safety valve for the U.S. should anything go wrong. The infield comes in here. And it will be your Doni Simone 0 for 3 today with a pair of strikeouts, but a bat that Cuba could rely on in other points in the series. And as opposed to the leadoff batter being on third, for that first run of the game that Cuba scored. We saw the grounder to Frank. He didn't pay any mind to the run trying to score and just executed the out thrown to first. Clearly, the U.S. very concerned with this runner on third in this case. First pitch swing, and he hits that one to center field. McCarthy back. He's going to handle it. The throw coming all the way in. It's a nice on-the-line one, but it will not be in time. Beautifully executed for Yudoni Simone and Cuba takes the lead in this top of the ninth and that's exactly what they were going for job he knew it had been done yeah executed to perfection there that's all you really wanted from Cuba you've got a power hitter at the plate and you really want to trust him to get the ball to the air and to the outfield. Torriente, 0-1 count here. Interesting that he squeezed in a timeout between Gilliam's pitches. Especially with no runners on now, following the sacrifice fly, you figured Gilliam would go right back to his quick pace. Quick pace indeed. Now one ball, two strikes. On the dirt, catches Torriente fishing. He's one for three today with a single and a run scored. No balls, two strikes. Right back up the middle past Gilliam's glove. to do if you're the U.S. Allow this to turn into a secondary rally and allow the Cuban lead to get greater than one run as it is right now. 
gets for the U.S. because the let 